building a model 1777 French flintlock hunting musket. Part 3, Stock Finishing. William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've written some 20 books. Most of these are outdoor titles, but among them is a business book. Create your own job security. In this book, I advocate that a person of any age who lives anywhere at any time start their own businesses when they need a little money, like perhaps right now, and explain exactly how to choose an appropriate business. This musket is being built for one of my characters in a forthcoming novel, Father of the Grooms, and he uses it to go on a boar hunt in Sicily. I've hunted hogs in North America and Europe, and here I am with a Florida hog killed with a 75 caliber Brunswick rifle. One thing we need to do is remove our trigger guard here. Now we had a little bit of trouble with it before and I had to drill out this wood screw here. But it seems that the tr trigger guard group is held by two pins that are accessed through here. So while I had the grinder we went ahead and made a punch that will go through the holes without enlarging them and we'll see if we can remove those and take off this guard. We're going to start sanding today on the buttstock and this is sort of the tail of two Black & Decker sanders. This is a typical flatbed hand sander and it uses cut sheets, rectangular sheets of sandpaper such as this. And uh, this is very excellent for doing flat surfaces. If you wanted to refinish a table or a boat or something like that, uh, yeah, this, uh, this sort of system works very, very well. Now, the Firestorm here by Black & Decker also is a newer model. And what it uses is Velcro attached sanding sheets here. Well, there may be some store somewhere that has those particular sheets in Georgia. But I've checked three of them and I can't find them. So this is a problem of using a proprietary kind of sanding sheet is, well, if they ain't got them, that machine is not a very much use to you. It did come with one sheet, and I'll use it in, for a little bit just to see what it's like, but uh, now this whole mess seems to be pretty well useless to me. Plus, it's very heavy weight is fine if you're sanding something flat, but if you're having to support the instrument horizontally or uh, work overhead with it or anything like that, yeah, that thing is going to tire you out in a hurry. You can see here on the butt plate how much the wood is sticking out above the metal. And these deep scratches here. So I'm going to use the 60 grit to see if I can get these down and reduce to somewhat. Well, the sanding has reduced the butt plate to more nearly flush with the wood now. And that's about as much as I'm going to do here with this grit. But also here, along the sides, I'm going to need to take the wood down again where it's flush with the butt plate itself. So the flat sander will do well to make this reduction. I'm going to be about that. And then we'll attempt to remove the butt plate itself so we can polish it more finely and actually uh, put a coat of browning on it. 
Now that I've shaped the butt plate to the wood, I can remove these two screws. So I'll be able to polish this now before putting the final finish on the stock. The 60 grit paper on this sander is the coarsest paper I'm going to use on this stock. But it gives a finer finish as you can start to see than the rough profiling that's on it right now. So I'm going to take advantage of it and make a run over the entire stock with 60 grit before I start going with a finer grit and actually start putting finish on the wood. We've gone over just about once with the 60 grit and what you want to do is like in this area right here this is where the cutting tool actually did a little bit of chatter that bounced along the wood a little bit as it moved and so you want to get these things out of here so you smooth it up more like this with the 60 grit and it'll just save you a lot of time with the finer grits here at the fore end we have a very little interesting thing in regards to the stock right back of the steel there is a little swell right here uh, very definitely intentional so far as the milling of this stock was concerned on most civilian forehand caps uh, the wood is cut to fit flush with the steel here but I suspect they may have left this little enlarged boss to help absorb the recoil because with this design we're getting down to a very thin stock indeed and so I'm going to round this a little bit but I'm going to leave this bulge and put a coat of wax actually on the wood here to protect it because the danger of course is that any water coming down the barrel will instantly seep into the wood right here and go down the grain unless it is sealed off with wax or, or something that is highly water resistant. We now have our stock stained with walnut stain. This is water based and after we steel wool this to remove the fuzz that's raised then we'll start actually applying our coats of oil finish. While the finish on the stock is drying we have the stock furniture to polish up and I'm going to do that with my belt sander behind me. And the reason I didn't do anything with the stock with the belt sander is this machine just works too fast. Uh, if you make a mistake with it uh, you can do almost irreparable damage in an instant. So uh, that's the reason I didn't use it on any part of the stock work. We'll work with slower powered and hand tools. We now have the stock stained and the next step is to take steel wool and sort of dress down these feathers that have been raised by the water in the stain and then we're going to start applying coats of true oil and this is from Birchwood Casey although there are many other such preparations one might use or tongue oil uh, to the stock and we'll probably put three or four coats on it before we're done and the procedure is to put your oil on the stock and then again uh, sand it lightly with steel wool and then apply another coat and allow it to dry mistakes most people make they don't allow the water from this first application of stain to evaporate completely which means that the oil will take much longer to dry so be patient let this thing sit at least overnight before you start trying to put oil on it and then you can oil to your heart's content you can't put too much oil on it uh, you want to do it 20 times, do it 20 times. That's fine. Now, 
this is starting to get as intimate as one gets with a gun. Somehow working on the stock gives you a real sense of bonding. And so this is about the time that, well, it's time to give this thing a name. And so we have chosen Bon Richard. Good Richard, uh, if you don't know the French. And so that's this gun's name. And so it will be. So we're going to get started here. The raw wood uh, very quickly started absorbing this oil. And so now the stock looks much more nearly like how it will look on the completed gun. So we're going to do several more coats before we're done. Allow these to dry between the coats and steel wool and continue. Um, you do it inside and out. For those who didn't see all the stages, the interior of the barrel channel here is black because it has a coat of spar varnish on it, just as an additional preservative and waterproofing. So this continues in stages. A caution about these and similar rags. You don't let these things wad up down in a plastic bucket somewhere or they will spontaneously ignite. Uh, as long as you've got one separate and loose is fine. So uh, be careful about these. So uh, be warned. All right. Well, that's this stage. And so now we have about completed the woodwork on the gun. And we're going to continue now, when this is drying, with finishing up on the metal parts, as we have already started, right here, and getting these polished down to bright and smooth, and then browned. But now this is Hovey Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Goose season starts at dawn tomorrow, and Bon Richard is telling me he wants one bad. Well, he's not going to go. Uh, not until I have a chance to actually finish the gun and work up some loads and get something I know that shoots well and can kill geese. Now, now, while I could slap it together, uh, no, I'm not going to do that one. Now, if you have such a gun or think about taking it deer hunting, by all means, target your gun first. Uh, don't just suppose it's going to shoot because you happen to stuff something down the barrel. Now, in regards to finishing the gun, let your finishes dry sufficiently between applications. Now, it should not be sticky. And if you do this, uh, then you'll wind up with a good, durable finish. Now, I did try at my friend's shop using his lathe to make a drill to drill out paper wads in 14 gauge, but unfortunately, I didn't have the skill to do it well enough to be successful. But I can cut styrofoam wads with it, and I'll cut some thinner styrofoam wads for overshot wads. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 825 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For details on how you can make extra money now with your own company, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To discover how my novel, screenplay, and movie project is going, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye. And God bless.